Guess what investment I make every year and never want to collect on, ever. I'll tell you when we come back. This is the voice of resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. Welcome to the program, friend. Insurance, right? If you've got car insurance or fire insurance for your home or health insurance, you don't want to get really sick. You don't want your house to burn down. You don't want to get in a car wreck. It's the one investment that we make that we don't want to collect on. But most of us still have insurance. There are things that we can do to prepare for tough times that may come that are like insurance. But most of the things that we would purchase, most of the investments that we make, at least we can still utilize. Think about it. It's an insurance investment that you can make for the protection of your family that you can eat, you can use, you can wear. So if you have the wisdom and the financial foresight to have health insurance, car insurance, homeowner's insurance, content insurance, fire insurance, right? Then why not have a little bit set aside in case tough times happen that are out of your control? Enjoy the series. Welcome to today's program, friend. We are trying to have a little bit of fun, just a little, as we discuss how you and I and our families can be prepared. Be prepared. The wise man sees danger approaching and prepares for it. The fool or the imprudent just passes on and suffers for it. We're in the middle of a multi-part series dealing with preparation against the hard times that I believe are coming and many people believe are coming. You don't have to be a prophet to see that the finances of this country are on a slow and steady path toward imploding. All right? Beyond that, you have the ethical issues of ch killing children and the blood crying out from the ground, the militant homosexual agenda decimating, mocking the truth about marriage and so forth. So if you missed episode one, I encourage you to go to the archives and see it because it deals with the biblical and Christian foundation of the impending judgment that may be coming upon us. So there are six B's. Let us quickly review those six B's. One, your belief. All right, that'd be God. Two, bread. Three, bandages. Four, bullion. Five, bullets. Six, your bug out bag. We're going to talk more about B for bread today. Before I do, I want to reiterate, I know that most of my viewers live in a city or very close to a city. The preparations that you need to do are a little bit different than some of us who live in the country. All of the six B's are going to be critical, all right? The issue is where do you store them? How much of them do you have? What it will be your water source if there is a crisis that lasts for one day? two days, two weeks, a month? How do you get out of the city? When do you bug in and hunker down? When do you bug out? These are, these are things that we'll talk about in the coming shows. But if you don't have oxygen, you die in five or six minutes. If you don't have water, you die in three or four days. If you don't have food, you're gonna die around day 40, maybe early 40s. You've gotta have food. We talked yesterday about a wheat mill. You can buy a 50 pound bag of wheat for about 25 bucks. And that 50 pound bag of wheat will make over 50 loaves of bread. My wife and I have been making our own bread. My wife makes it. I just help butter it. Um, she's been making baking bread from raw wheat, wheat berries to fresh baked bread inside of two hours um, for about five years now. And it's under a dollar a loaf. And you can literally live on it for months, probably years, because it has every basic nutrient that your body needs, with the exception of vitamin C. And when you put a dough enhancer in there, it has vitamin C in it. 
and it's delicious, all right? Paula's Bread is one of our sponsors, and I heartily encourage you to get your own. We do not sell this unit. We showed this unit because it's a good unit. This one will work if there's electricity. If the electricity goes out, you attach your hand crank and crank your wheat. I want us to take a step back for people who are on a tighter budget. Right here, del grosso meat flavored pasta sauce, prego. I think there's a law somewhere that says if your name does not end in a vowel, you are not permitted by law to manufacture and sell Italian pasta sauce. My mama's a deep Pasquale, so I, I can make all the Italian jokes that I want. Grew up with Italian culture. But there's a phrase in the Bible dealing with um, the gleanings, and the phrase is this, that the poor of the land may eat. That the poor of the land may eat. This is 24 ounces of pasta sauce, all right? It goes on sale pretty regularly for a dollar a jar. You can buy this for a dollar. You can buy a pound of pasta, which also usually is about $1.79 a pound, $1.59, but maybe once a month, once every five weeks, it will go on sale for a dollar a pound. A family of four can eat and be full on $2. I want to say that again. Your pound of pasta with your 24 ounce jar of whatever flavored tomato paste, tomato sauce you want, for $2, you can eat and live for a long time. If you, when this stuff goes on sale, I'm letting you know some of the things we do, okay? And I, I want to be totally honest with you. Some of the things that I'm going to discuss with you and have discussed we have not yet put into place. Some of them we have, some of them we haven't. So this is a learning curve for me, my family, my staff. But the simple matter is, some people can't go out and buy an $800 wheat mill. Some people can't go out and buy a $300 water filtration system. And they've got to improvise, right? Like the, the water bob that we looked at yesterday. Part of why I'm doing this is to whet your appetite and to put baby steps in front of you that you can do to prepare yourself to be prepared so that if bad things happen, you and your family don't go hungry or go thirsty. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue on with this B on bread. Don't go away. Hey, can somebody get me some garlic toast? I love garlic toast inside my Del Grosso. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design, or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what, 16, 18 years old? Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be. We have put together what we call an online university for you. Now that's a highfalutin way of saying that we have a pretty significant library of material, books, tapes, videos, that are there for you for free. Why are we doing this? Because America is desperate for new leaders and because this material could help you to become the leader that you and God want you to be. Check it out and enjoy it. Welcome back to the program, friend. We're continuing on in our series about being prepared, following God's will, the proverb, to be prepared. Um, by the way, today's program brought to you in part by toilet paper. While it might not be edible, it comes in handy for those things that are. Hey, all kidding aside, um, as you and I discuss the bees, all right, bullion is one of them, Bullion doesn't just mean silver and gold. It means tangible things that you can barter with. 
And if you've been watching the news, you might know that right now in Venezuela, the whole country is out of toilet paper, literally. The Catholic Church was even talking about flying in airplane loads. I, 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 anyway, all of that to say this. Toilet paper is a very critical item for a lot of people, and it's barterable. It has inherent value. So you might be out of, oh, say, tomato sauce, and you go to somebody and you negotiate a deal of how many cans of tomato sauce or jars of tomato sauce for how many rolls of toilet paper. Don't underestimate the value of, of tangible items that you cannot eat, but that might get you food when you need it. And I'm, I wanna say one other thing and uh, thank my team here. What's in your pantry? What is your pantry made of? We're gonna talk about some of these items here, but one real simple way to be ready for difficult times is if when you go to the grocery store, you normally buy four jars of tomato paste, buy eight, okay? If you normally buy three pounds of pasta, buy six. If you normally buy a 12 pack of toilet paper, buy two. Stock steadily, stock up your pantry or closet space that you have in the house with items that you like and that you want. And when they're on sale, when, when this tomato sauce goes on sale for a buck a jar or pasta goes on for a buck a jar, we will buy for our team, for our people, our friends here, family, etc., we'll buy 20 of these, 30 of them, 40 of them. Why not? It'll keep for eh, usually a year to two years. Usually that's about how much you get out of it. It'll get eaten. Just keep rotating your stock, right? But then you've got it if you need it. Now, let's talk about this. Uh, you might have a Costco's or a BJ's or a Sam's Club near you. Uh, this particular item, this food steerage, uh, if my memory is correct, came from Costco's, all right? It was on sale for $75, and as you can see, I don't know, Lane, if they can see this or not, but it's one month, one person, 2,100 calories, okay? One month, one person, 2,100 calories a day. That's a lot of calories, and what you're going to be eating in this particular product is, uh, and by the way, this has a 20-year shelf life, 20 years okay so inside of here you've got mixed vegetables you've got instant potatoes let's see you've got chicken vegetable cheddar broccoli rice hearty potato beef vegetable mixed vegetable instant potatoes cheesy pasta that's about you know less than three dollars a day so to get 2200 calories for less than three dollars a day that's a that's a good deal so if you bought four of these and set them aside, if you've got a family of four, you know that if all hell breaks loose and you've got water, okay, remember our discussion about water, well, you're going to live pretty well for a month. If you had to just hunker down in your house, there was violence in the city and you just did not feel safe even leaving the house, you're going you're to eat well as long as you've got water to add to this. Uh, on this particular item, you might remember that before the break I was talking uh, and in yesterday's show talking about grinding your own wheat. Well, when you buy a 50 pound bag of wheat, if you set it in the corner, the mice might get it, moths might get it, water might get it. So what do you do? You buy one of these, can these five gallon buckets that are made for this and you put your wheat inside of this along with a deoxygenator. Right? And when you seal that, your wheat in that bucket is safe for 25 years. 25 years. That's pretty good. And it's an insurance policy. Again, I want to say to you, I do not want to collect on my car insurance, on my health insurance, on my house insurance, on my liability insurance, and I certainly don't want to collect on my life insurance. But I have a duty. I have a biblical duty, a Christian duty to my wife, to our children, to my mom and dad. I have a duty to care for them and to provide for them. It is part of my duty. This is some of the ways that we can prepare and take care of the bee that's bred. I'm going to take a break. We've got more bee bread stuff when we come back. We might move on to bullion or something like that. Don't go away. I'll be right back.
Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. Welcome back, friend. And by the way, good stewardship, right? Some people might be tempted to say, well, you're buying all this stuff and what if you never use it? Well, first of all, when my car insurance doesn't get used, the end, all right? That money is gone. When my health insurance doesn't get used, goodbye. That money's just gone. With this, however, none of it has to be wasted. I repeat, none of it. We'll eat the pasta. We'll eat the spaghetti sauce, just keep rotating your stock. This stuff, it's good for 20 years. Let's say that this, uh, 10 years from now, you haven't used it. Your local soup kitchen, your local rescue mission would love to have this to feed to the homeless. Doesn't get wasted. The, um, the other item that I showed you, the, the freeze dried, or, or rather the, the vacuum sealed um, grain, we had seven bags of grain go bad because we didn't have it in a protected bucket, all right? The mice got to it. Third, 50, 50 pounds of bags, seven bags. You better believe I was crestfallen. We paid about $23, $24 a bag. A local farmer gave us $20 a bag for it for his chickens. Fed it to the chickens. Hogs, chickens, there's, there's farm animals that'll eat this stuff. It doesn't have to be wasted. Think about that. All right, let's continue on with what we're talking about. Okay, these are freeze, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, these are um, dehydrated apples, all right? So you get an apple, you peel it, and then run it through a, uh, a, a tool that is made to put them into thin slices. So after they're thin sliced, you put them in a dehydrator. Now the dehydrator you're seeing here, I think is the Excalibur. One thing you need to know, by the way, about dehydrators, which is really important, some dehydrators can only do fruits and vegetables. Some can do meat. So if you're a fan of different jerkies, beef jerky, goose jerky, any number of, of meats that you can dehydrate, you have to make sure that the dehydrator that you purchase gets the item to a hot enough temperature to make it safe, the meat safe for human consumption because there are different temperatures when it comes to fruit. All right, so you've dehydrated your apples. This here jar is what these here apples came out of. This delightful machine is made to suck the air out of this. So you've put in your dehydrated apples in here. You put in one of these little things that are, they're like you have in your, um, your vitamins, keep the moisture out of your vitamin bottle. You put it in, put this on, turn it on. It'll suck the oxygen out. It'll seal that little metal lid. And then voila, you have a jar of dehydrated, dehydrated apples. Apples are a great source of nutrition. They taste delicious, by the way. These things are really good. This handy dandy item. This is a grinder for different wheats, oats, grains. Um, say, what, what's the name of that cereal that we were talking about off Grape camera? Nuts. Grape nuts. Um, you could put different grains in this and grind it and it'll come out like one of the heartier cereals that you can eat. Okay, you're not gonna chew on raw wheat berries, but if you put them through this, then it would be like grape nuts and you could do it. These are not expensive, people. And while some of your family or friends might think that you were crazy for doing it, they'll be awfully happy if you're like Gideon. I'll tell you this before we go. We gotta, I, I gotta take a break in a second. When the Midianites invaded Israel, if you look at Judges chapter six, it says that 
the people of Israel turned their backs on God and God was upset with them. So he handed them over to the Midianites. The Midianites would come in every year and steal the harvest. They would take animals and people were starving to death. But Gideon was smart enough to figure out a way to smuggle and hide wheat. And then he was threshing the wheat in a wine press, okay, which would have been down below the surface to keep it hidden from the Midianites. That's the one that God picked to fight the Midianites, Gideon. He was thinking of his family, right? And I'll bet that if he had been threshing wheat in a wine press, which is very unorthodox, because you're throwing up the wheat and all the, sh the chaff's coming down on you and sticking to your body, I'm sure that his family would have mocked him. But you know what? They weren't mocking him when they were eating bread because of his ingenuity and his foresight. You might be like Joseph who saves the day someday like you did in Egypt. I gotta take a break, I'll be right back. It took me 14 years to write it. Four rewrites, countless edits. I poured my heart and soul into Dragon Slayers. It points a very inspiring and painful book to write. I encourage you to go to our website and look at the reviews that we have gotten from readers of this book and then avail yourself. It's an allegory and I, I promise you, you'll be inspired. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the Republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. Welcome back to the program, friend. We are in a multi-part series on God's wisdom for preparation against hard times. There are difficult times coming and you want to be prepared. All right, uh, this handy dandy item is what some people call a hot water bath. Uh, Lane will get some really good B-roll, but if you want to put up tomatoes or fruit, you do not have to have a pressure cooker for them. A lot of vegetables, all meats, you have to have a pressure cooker, which is a very different process. But if you want to put up some strawberry preserves or whatever, or canned tomatoes, because tomatoes have a very high acid content, you can use this. My wife and I this year planted, I think, 24 tomato plants. As I said, got an Italian background. And we are going to put up tomatoes this year. We're eating them every day, loving them, enjoying them, but we're about to be inundated. We won't have enough room in our tummy to eat them all before they go bad. What will we do? We'll can them. You can do it. You can do it. I mean, again, what, what I'm showing you 100 years ago was standard fare. 150 years ago, you better believe people were putting stuff up. They didn't have grocery stores like we have today. And all of this is predicated on the idea that God said in his word, the wise man sees danger approaching, sees tough times coming, if you will, and prepares for it. We want to be wise. We want to take care of our family and friends. So, and that's one other thing I'll say. If your neighbor needs a meal, you want to be able to give it to him. Not necessarily take him in your home, but give him a meal, send him on his way. All right, it's part of our Christian charity to love our neighbor as ourselves as well. I'm out of time. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll keep going with the six B's. Hope that you're enjoying the series. Uh, it is a part of a five-part series. And if you missed any of the episodes, you can go to our website. And for free, you can watch the entire series. And again, I want to remind you, we're not selling any of these things. The only thing that we have, only advertisement that we have is a bread maker. Okay? And that's because my wife and I have been enjoying fresh baked bread from wheat that we grind for five or six years now. With that exception, we don't sell any of this stuff. 
but we want you to be prepared in case tough times come. It's an insurance policy. Get it. Thank you.